<laughs> I'm just gonna cry a little bit, okay? This episode of the HVAC Diaries is brought to you by New Calgon. Hey guys! Do you love my hat? Everything I own is pink now. <laughs> just kidding. This vlog is the first one after CMPX. So this week is a little tough after being off for a week. Especially on Monday I had like the conference blues. I was just missing everybody. But anyway, we had a pretty easy week. Just a few service calls, which I will tell you all about right now. I think the most interesting job this week was a display cooler at a coffee shop that just wouldn't work for a very horrible reason. Oh, no. We had another display cooler at a totally different coffee shop that wasn't getting cold enough. We changed filters in a couple of places. One was in a Tim Hortons in downtown Vancouver. And the other one was in the pub and liquor store that I get to do every month. We also took a look at an ice machine in a coffee shop that was giving off like a burning smell. We also had to deal with one unit that is absolutely inaccessible. The blower motor stopped running, so we had to investigate that. And for the last week of Women's Month for March, I was part of a panel discussion for the Mechanical Contractors Association of British Columbia, along with three other ladies. So there were four of us in total um, on a Zoom call for coffee talks. And it was a really cool little experience. So if you're ready for some HVAC adventures, let's go. Surprise, surprise, it's raining on a Monday. We're looking at this display cooler at a coffee shop that's not working and it's just not working. And as soon as we put our faces down there, we could smell something. We could smell something. And so we're just checking things out. This unit is not running at all. The fan's not starting, the compressor's not even trying. So there's a bit of weirdness in the electrical compartment. So we're just checking that out. We actually found the uh, high pressure safety switch tripped. So we reset that, doing a few more checks, and then dad goes to spin the fan blade just to make sure that it's free, and it's not. Oh, there it is. There's our problem. There's our problem. So this poor guy was probably just looking for a warm place to be, found this place, got stuck in the fan blade, and tripped the unit on high pressure. <laughs> Luckily, there was no motor damage or anything like that. So we're just going to see if we can pull that cover off the fan and then just get her out nice and gently. Well, if you can believe it in my office job, I was the one responsible for dead mice when we found oh, them really? in the office. They oh. used to call me, Jess, we smell something. Okay, okay. And I would always find it and have to dispose of it. Look at me now. <laughs> no, no difference. No difference. Only now little mousy is in the way of my screw. <laughs> you have to touch the tail. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to be really gross, you guys. Let's just fucking do it. Oh. Unfortunately, that fan cover is riveted on, so we can't just pull out the little screw or the little bolt. It doesn't work at all. So I'm going to have to pull this mouse through the fan guard, and I am not dealing with it very well. Here, let me... <laughs> And just to make sure that Trevor wasn't lying to me about the rivet, I obviously had to try that screw myself just to make sure, <laughs> but it was just spinning and spinning to nothing. Do you use the pliers? Here, use the pliers. Okay, one second. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry a little bit, okay? Well, it's not like you're killing it, it's already. Right. Holy fuck, this is disgusting. <laughs> Why did I put my hand to my mouth? All right, Mousy's gone. Now we're just making sure that the system works. There's no other problems with it. And we're good to go. Yeah. 
Now we're headed to another coffee shop to another display cooler, but hopefully only one mouse per vlog. So let's see what's up with this one. This display cooler was at temperature when we arrived. However, they say when they pack it with the door open just a little bit, uh, it goes up to about 11 degrees and it doesn't come back down. So we're just confirming that the, the temperature is correct inside. And we're gonna check things out here. We suspect the system to be low on refrigerant. So we're gonna check that with our gauges. And luckily this system already has an access port so we don't have to add one. And unfortunately, we are a little bit low on refrigerant. This system takes 28 ounces of 134A. It's a very precise amount. So I'm just going to grab that from our truck. And I was just having such a struggle that day working out of the, the back of a pickup truck like this. Everything, all of our refrigerant bottles are stashed at the back. Ugh, so annoying. Anyway, I got my 134A. Now let's go. I was trying to get all fancy with my camera. I was trying to keep things interesting for you guys, trying to get different angles and just being creative. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I did not get any videos of us leak checking because I'd left that with my dad while I was grabbing stuff from the truck. So unfortunately no videos of that, but we didn't find any conclusive leaks, which happens all too often. So we're just gonna top her up a little bit and see how she responds. And already we've got a bit of frosting back to our suction line, which is what we're looking for. Our temperature is coming down inside the box. We're gonna do some touchy-feely tests. We've got a hot liquid pipe. And our compressor is actually a lot less hot. When we arrived, it was just scorching hot. Dad's gonna double check that too. And I'm just gonna feel that too. Temperature is looking a lot better both inside and on the display, and we are dunsies here. So when we find really small leaks like that on very small systems like reach-in coolers and freezers and stuff like that, and usually ones that we haven't worked on before so we don't know the history of it, we'll usually top it up. We'll do like a really basic leak test but not spend too much time on it. We'll top it up and then we'll see how long it lasts for. Sometimes the leak could be right at the access fitting. Um, sometimes there's like a little rubber seal inside the, uh, the thumb cap. And sometimes that becomes compromised and it just leaks through. So sometimes we could be searching for hours for a leak that doesn't exist. And so instead of doing that, we'll top up the system and see how long it lasts for. Sometimes we'll top it up and it'll last forever and they'll never call us back. And sometimes they'll call us like a year later and be like, it's doing the same thing. And sometimes they'll call us like a day, a week later and say, yeah, it's happening again. And at that point, when there's a leak like that, then we'll go in and fully find that leak. We'll do a full thorough leak test and find the leak because that kind of leak is a lot larger than one that'll take like a year or two to leak out. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, an explanation on that why we don't do more of a thorough leak test on these little systems. Um, if we need to, we absolutely will. Now we're heading to downtown Vancouver to a Tim Hortons where we just have to change the filters in all of their units. They have three units here and each of them are so tricky to get to. This one is the easiest. And I'm done with that one. So easy and simple on YouTube. All right, let's see about this filter. This is my filter access here. I got the filter right in this spot right here. You saw me just use this filter puller to get them out, but luckily they're two different sizes so that I can get them in past all of this garbage.
if you've ever wondered what it looks like behind the scenes at Tim Hortons, this is what it is like. <laughs> so exciting. The third and final unit that we change filters on is in the back here. However, when we went up there, we found that the blower motor wasn't running at all. And so now we're trying to strategize how we're going to get to it because it is a mishmash of garbage up there. They have a storage room on the other side that is just jam packed. So we've asked them to clear that out. I want to come back another day and deal with this. But for now, I'm just going to head off to my next job to change filters at the pub and liquor store. And you guys have seen me do this every five weeks or so. Um, I left my 360 camera at home this day, so you got these nice close-ups. And because I'm, I'm there so often, I keep a stash of spare filters in their ceiling space. So I just grab them when I arrive. And unfortunately today, it was just giving me a hard time. I could not get these out easily. I'm just gonna bring you along for my struggle. It's part of the fun. This is the location where I have to literally fold the filter in half to get it out and then back in half to get it in. And I'm always so surprised that this filter is so dirty every five weeks. I have to come here and I cannot mess it because there'd be problems. On the liquor store side, I found the thermostat with dead batteries. So just quickly changing those for some new ones. It's riveting content right here. And we're back in business. Let's get that back on the wall. Good to go for a while. The liquor store filter is fairly easy to replace. There's no obstructions around the unit, although there's a lot of glass bottles right below me. They've actually recently covered them in a like a Perspex casing, so I feel better about it. <laughs> now Dad and I are gonna go check out an ice machine at a coffee shop inside of a mall. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is it full of ice right now? No, no, no. Okay. So the complaint on this ice machine is that there's a burning smell coming from it. So we're just going to sort of investigate and see what we can see in here. And this is what we could hear. That's the water pump struggling. So we're going to pull this guy out from underneath the counter and look at it from the top. Unfortunately, obviously, that water pump is on its way out, so we're going to have to source a new one. Just trying to search for that water pump on that ice machine. It's a Cornelius, Cornelius ice machine. So there's a pot spike down right here. I just want to find out exactly which water pump I need. So this should help me. Aha. There we go. I'm looking for that see water pump see page nine all right let's go to page nine page nine beautiful just a quick note about that water pump for the ice machine i was able to find um one supplier for that thing Actually, I tried a second supplier because I wasn't happy with the price that they gave me. $1,500 they quoted me for a little water pump like that. That's my cost. That's not even like after putting up a markup on it to sell the thing. So yeah, I tried a second place because I didn't like the price of it. And that lady came back to me and she was like, actually, we're out of stock of those. But I would suggest you try this company, which is Partstown, Canada. And I'm like, cool. Well, 
I've already tried Pottstown and you're my second try, so thanks for nothing. <laughs> so we've let our customer know about the price of this thing and they are still making a decision whether they're going to repair the ice machine or if they're just gonna get a new one. And that's really sad because things just seem to be made disposable these days, I don't know. Okay, we're heading back downtown to the Tim Hortons and we're hoping that they've cleared that storage room. And they have, it's a miracle. Look at all of that garbage they're taking out. This is the storage room just above their walk-in cooler and freezer. And this is how it looks now that they've cleared a bunch of stuff. And our defrost timer for the walk-in is right at the back behind that boiler. Fun. And it's always such a hassle working at Tim Hortons because it's always so busy. People just need to do their jobs. So I'm always have to, having to hold the door or holding the ladder. I thought of using my 360 camera to see if I could see the access in the ceiling space. And it's just so crazy. There's just so much stuff in this ceiling space. Uh, there's a shelf right there. Coming on this side is not much easier. There's just so much stuff everywhere. So we're game planning and we're really wondering how we're gonna change this blower motor. So Trev got himself up there. He's standing on the shelf, it's not the most ideal. But luckily, it wasn't the blower motor, it was the capacitor. The cap is visually busted, but I'm just making sure. I'm just gonna test it out with the capacitance on my voltmeter and make sure. We should have 20 microfarads on this capacitor. And we got a big old zero. Which is really good news. So let's go to the truck and grab a new capacitor and get this sucker working again. So Trev was up there, he replaced the capacitor and he's just putting all the panels back together and calling it a day. He really shouldn't be on this shelf, but we're at the mercy of what's here. I almost forgot to mention the Women in HVAC Our Canada board meeting that we had this week. These hats and the hoodie that I wore in my CMPX vlog are still available for purchase if you would like to get your hands on some. I'll leave a link below and you can uh, join our fundraiser and get some cool swag. Well, that's all the adventures I have for you this week on the HVAC Diaries HVAC vlog. It's a pretty easy week this week. Next week is not going to be that easy. We've got a couple of really tough things planned, so should be good. I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you in my next vlog. So I will see you then. Bye guys. Why is it raining harder now? Suddenly. Go away. Go away rain. I see sun. Hey guys. <laughs> Why? Why is it so awkward to start these things? Okay, cool. X. So, and we also had to deal with one rooftop unit, no, for the last week of International Women's Month, is that a thing? I don't know, March is Women's Month, I was in, fuck, of course now that I've stopped recording the vlog, it stops raining too, mm-hmm. Who's gonna do uh. it? You haven't touched the tail? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry a little bit, okay? Well, it's not like you're killing it, it's already. Ooh.